misunderstood part about you. Me? Mm -hmm. That I'm a slut? <laughs> well, look at the way I was dressed. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a shtick. It was a, you know, we went out there and we, we played up the, the nitro and sex angle. But everybody looks at you and thinks that you're easy. Not so much. Jungle Pam. When I met Jungle, uh, I had, uh, I was in high school still, it was the last two weeks, and I decided to walk into town. Um, and I was ambling up the uh, main thoroughfare in Westchester, and a yellow Corvette passed me and I uh, made a left-hand turn and I just kept walking and the yellow Corvette came back and pulled up to the curb and the gentleman got out and he stood in front of me and says, hi, I'm Jim. And that was my introduction to drag racing. Drag racing is far out! Did you have any idea where your life was going to go from that moment? <laughs> no, I was 18 years old. <laughs> My life uh, at that point had been, I was accepted to Westchester Bobby, we can State hear you. Be quiet. at the time in business administration. And uh, I was going to go to college and be one of the people who make the world go around. And instead, I hopped into Jungle's Corvette and went back to his house. Don't do this. And um, we went to his house, and I met Shirley Muldowney. And um, it was you know, just a whirlwind of, you know, I, I got there, and there were cars in the driveway. Um, people were having a good time, and I thought, mm, this looks like fun. More fun than I'm going to have. So uh, that's my introduction to drag racing. Do you ever regret that day that uh, walking down the street, getting in the Corvette? No. No, 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 no. Take a chance in life. You know, I mean, it's not like somebody held a gun to my head. You could have backed at it any time. You know, you know if you don't take a chance, you, you just never know. And then you regret it for the rest of your life because you didn't take the chance. Were you so much more than just a, a pretty face that went out there and backed the car up? I mean, did you do a lot on the car between? Ass, gas, or grass. Nobody rides for free. If you couldn't at least, you know, change water, oil, pack a parachute, you know, I mean, there's no reason for you to be around. Um, so I did. I mean, I knew what the tools were and how to do things. I mean, I didn't tune the engine or anything, but I, I could be helpful around the car. Did you learn anything about tuning? I can't say that I did on a technical level. I knew, you know, generally. When I first started drag racing, people could have been speaking Swahili for all I know. I didn't know the first thing about the lingo of drag racing. I, by the time I got out, I knew what people were aiming for and what they were, you know, when they spoke about, you know, uh, you know uh, how they were setting up an engine, I knew what they were going for. Um, so in today's world, yes, when, when people talk about tuning their engines, I know what they're going for. I only saw you getting there on the ground looking under the car and everything. There's a reason for that. Was that for show? Or? No, 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 no. You know, you didn't want all the buttoned up cars that you, that you do today. You didn't have the diapers and the doodads and the gigaws. Back then, you could have liquid leaking out of any place. 
again, we're match racing. So I would go and bend down there, and I could see if there was water or, or nitro or oil leaking. And then he'd back up, and I would dip my fingers into it. You know, if it, if it wasn't obviously oil, I'd put it to my mouth, and it would be nitro or water. And I would get off to the side there, and I'd tell Jungle that it was oil or water and that's how he knew how to, to run. Maybe he would uh, run differently. Maybe he would have. All right. Welcome to the Thunder Road Show. I'm your host, Doug Johnson. Steve Computer's in the house. Beep, beep. You were watching uh, the intro here. Is uh, one of the wonderful series of uh, videos done by Bobby Bennett of Competition Plus, a gentleman who's been in the uh, motorsports media for 30 years um, interview with Jungle Pam there Steve she said gas grass or ass you're paying with one right she uh, talking about being on the team you're a either paying with gas 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 grass, grass or ass. ass so she worked on the car and helped out and uh, we are gonna have an exclusive with Bobby Bennett just here in a minute y'all please like and share this is a big one. This is probably the uh, first interview you will hear that's not on the news, not on the mainstream news, with somebody who actually survived the coronavirus, COVID-19, which the whole entire world is freaking out over right now. This is a, uh, a big episode, and, and I was just, we wanted to open the show by showing you some of the work Bobby does, and that was a, it's an amazing interview with Jungle Pam who was the backup girl, among other things, for Jungle Jim, the legend of match racing. So, um, we are, uh, you know, guys, what are you doing? How are you been? How are you surviving lockdown? Please like and share this. This is a, a, a big interview um, for us. And uh, we are brought to you by Mosier Engineering. I had to do it. Mosier Engineering, Nitrous Outlet, Glass Tech. TBM Brakes, DaVinci Performance Carburetors, Katie Custom Finishes, and Lone Star Ring and Pinion here yep. in Katie. So I want to tell you right now that I have some examples of things that do not qualify as coronavirus masks. This is one. This does not work. You will get the virus. I've seen this kind of shit at Walmart. If you go to any Walmart in the country, you can see James K type people, the James Ks of the world, what, did you see the video, James K? All garbage bagged up with a respirator on and no gloves. This is also not a ideal form of mask for the coronavirus. This is a canid filter. It does not fit over your mouth, and that's the four inch diameter. It's not going to work. There's a meme going around that we shared of this, but it just, it's not going to work, folks. You have to get approved masks like Steve Computer's wearing. You know, so, is that a 19? This 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 is a COVID-19 proof set up here. The glasses too? Oh yeah, because it can get in your eyes too. Like if somebody sneezes, the yeah. the spittle might fly in your. So that's the appropriate mask. Use. That's not the mask from the uh, Sherwin Williams. No, this is not a Sherwin. This is a uh, what do they call it? The N N95. Yeah, where'd you get it? How'd you score one? <laughs> somebody I know that's. Is wants to remain oh, nameless. Wants to remain we, nameless. We got to protect the. Yeah, we got to protect the stash. But uh, yeah, you do not give up your your. Uh, what is it in the media sources? Sources, yeah. yeah. You don't give up your sources, Steve. All right. So let's do this. There's with with nothing else to talk about in the world right now, but a media person himself who survived the coronavirus i'm gonna maximize this oh wait i'm gonna do this i meant this maximize back i'm gonna go full screen is what i'm trying oh full screen there we go is that good for you steve yeah give me just a second here having some technical issues did i mess it up for you no one second bobby Whoa. Steve computer is uh, functioning a little slow here today. All 
All righty. You're on. All right. Welcome to the show, Bobby Bennett. I am so excited to have you on, but I'm more excited that you're feeling well. You're doing better. Uh, you updated the world the other day via Facebook. I'm telling you, tell us right now, first of all, how do you feel right now? Well, gentlemen, Mike, right now I'm a little bit worn down. It's the end of the day. Um, it, it, each day I get a little bit better. Um, uh, down on power, of course, but uh, it just it takes a lot out of you. You know, I, I wish, I wish I could, I, I wish I could laugh about the mask. I wish I could carry on and and, and have a have a joke and have a laugh and not take it so serious. But guys, when you're laying in bed four, four and five days with consecutive 103, 104 degree temperatures. And you pray to God that he'll take your life right then so you don't have to go through another day of it. Just kind of takes all the humor out of it. Yeah, and I I, I wanted to uh, try to open the show lightly, and, and, and but, uh, you know, no disrespect at all. Uh, uh, I, tell us how how it started. Where do, you, where do you think you got it? Did you travel somewhere? How did you... Let's go. Let's go from the beginning and find it and talk about where you'd been the the week before you got sick and 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 what happened. How you knew you were sick? Well, the, the COVID nineteen coronavirus was going around and nobody took it serious. I didn't take it serious. Oh, I got I got lambs. I'm fine. I, corona's got lambs. You know, will kill the coronavirus. That was about my my ignorant. Uh, attempt at humor. So I was out at Bakersfield, California, and you know what? Drag racers are never going to tell anybody when they're sick. You just They just go about it and do whatever. And uh, I don't think that I got sick while I was at the Bakersfield March meet. What I do believe is I do believe I picked up the virus uh, on the flight home, uh, kind of red eye flight, Sunday night after the race is over catch a flight from LAX to Charlotte. Well, when you're asleep on the plane and, and, and people around you are coughing, you, you just don't even think about it. You think you're invincible. And uh, I was actually on my way to Gainesville Thursday and when they closed down the race. And I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. Why are you shutting down the race? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's just the flu. We'll get over it. So I got about an hour and a half down the freeway and turned around and came back home. And uh, Friday I started feeling a little bit down on power. I told my wife, I said, I'm not feeling good. I'm th I think I got the flu or something. Something's coming on. So I tried to be proactive and I got up that Saturday morning, went to the urgent care. They diagnosed me with a, uh, a, a sinus infection. Gave me some some uh, inhaler and some some uh, antibiotics and sent me home. And the next day I started running a fever, and each day the fever got progressively worse. And I went to my local hospital. I drove myself to the hospital, and they had me in there for two hours. And and they uh, my temperature had, had rose about a degree, degree and a half while I was just there in the hospital. And I was right at 100 degrees when they sent me home and basically told me, said, Bad, don't call us, we'll call you. You can sign into this chart thing and we'll communicate. Well, after about four more days of that fever just, just drenching me, 103 degrees, let me tell you something, everything in your body aches, the inside of your eyeballs burn, and you can't eat. You can't eat. If you eat, you get sick. But if you don't eat, you get sick. So you, it's like you don't if you do and don't if you don't. And then finally, by the end of the week, I called my buddy Ian. He's a man racing friend. And I told him, he, because he has connections uh, at uh, DHEC. And, uh, he, What's DHEC? Uh, Department of Health and Environmental Control. Oh, wow. Yes, a government agency. And they told, he told them all the symptoms that I had, everything which was the COVID virus. 
you know, you're sick and, and you know, it's, I, I just told him, I said, I, I'll not make it another day. I can't make it another day. I, I, I don't think I will be alive tomorrow. Wow. I, I said, God, I said, please take me home. I can't take this anymore. Please. I can't, I can't do this anymore. And uh, my wife stuck her head in the bedroom. Uh, and it's, it's been, you know, we've been married 18 years. And for, for two weeks, I have not even been able to lay down beside my wife in bed because I've been in quarantine. Wow. And, uh, and the worst thing you want to do is make her go through that. Yeah, I, she stuck her head in. She told me, she said, please don't give up, hon. We can't make it without you. Please don't give up. I'd already given up. Uh, my, my wife, Christy, she just, uh, she just said, you, you, don't give up. Just please give up. And I called my friend again. I said, I'll not make it another day. And the people at DHEC said, get him in a car. And you get him to this hospital. So we go past that other hospital 30 miles. I went to another hospital, and the first thing they went in and started working on me with bringing my temperature down. And I'm telling you, when that thing broke, I was distressed. It's, it's like somebody took a bucket of water and just dumped it on me. Uh, and each day, they brought my temperature down, got my diabetes under control, because it affects everything. You, you, will, you will actually have headaches when you wake up because your dreams are so intense and they don't even make sense. They're just numbers running in your head. Just anything and everything was running through my head and I'd wake up with migraine headaches. I probably had more migraine headaches in one week than I had in the whole year. Wow, and migraines are kind of common for you or what? No, no, not that. No, even despite the industry I work in, it's not really that bad. But I just, you know, I was, I was falling apart and then after four days of being fever free in the hospital, the doctor says, uh, we're going to send you home. I said, how are you going to send me home and you don't even know what's wrong with me? Oh, we know what's wrong with you. I said, well, you want to tell me? I got the flu, what? He said, no, you got COVID-19. I said, you got any kind of documentation to prove this to me? He says, we'll get the test back. Well, the first hospital that I went to, and when they take the, the test, they take like a swab and they stick it up your nose and they stick it up so far that you think they're going to tickle your eyeballs. Oh, my God. And then they go into each nostril. And uh, so... That's I the went, test for it. So everybody that's going to rush out to these uh, drive through testing facilities and think they're just going to give a swab out of their cheek is in for some rude right, awakening. Very painful. But uh, at this point, what I'd already been through, I mean, you could have hit me in the head with an axe and it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Right. But for what I felt, but look, I'm not, I'm not looking for sympathy. I don't want anybody's sympathy. I just want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. And uh, so on my drive, my wife was on, my, on her way to come pick me up at the hospital. My wife couldn't even visit me in the hospital. The nurses came in and they looked like they were in hazmat suits. Wow. Did you feel like and, you were in, a, in, the, in the movie Outbreak? Yeah. Yeah. I, you talk about a lonely feeling. You got nobody to talk to. You're there by yourself in a room and, and nobody there. And nobody you're talking, there. this is eight days of feeling like crap already, huh? Yeah, I'm on back day 17 now. Oh, my God. Uh, so, I, uh, my wife got a call from the first hospital and says, uh, we just want to let you know, uh, may we speak to Bobby Bennett? She said, he's in the hospital right now. And they said, he's in the hospital? And she said, yeah, we had to take him to another hospital. Uh, but he tested positive for COVID-19. She said, okay, then I'll let him know when we uh, pick him up. So, and then I got home, and then the other hospital I just left, and said, well, you tested positive for COVID-19. So, so, that was so did, did you get two nose swabs? Yeah, four. Four? four? Oh. Yeah. yeah. At this point, at this point, you know, you, you uh, it, it, it's, it doesn't matter. 
like I said, and it doesn't matter because every part of your body has been affected, even to the point where you've had diarrhea for days. You know, it, it just, it, and, and you feel like your insides are just going to fall out. It doesn't matter. On top of you running a fever and, and, and all of this stuff. And, and let me tell you something, I, I did not want to write what I wrote. Um, my friends begged me, says, you've got to tell people what this is like. They'll never believe it unless they hear it from somebody they know. And I'm like, yeah, you want me to, you want me to tell, tell the, the most degrading moments of your life when, when you can't even get out of bed, when, when your, your stomach is so torn up, and all that. You want to you wanna share that with everybody? And then they said that's the only way they'll believe it. So I started writing, and I wrote a few graphs. And then I was out of energy. I had to go lay down, took a nap. Then I got up and wrote a few more graphs. Ran out of energy. Let me tell you something. Just getting up to go to the bathroom would drain every bit of energy you had. And uh, where did you get an appetite back where you could somewhat hold it down? Uh, I started getting that like last Friday, Thursday or Friday. That uh, I lived off of jelly and popsicles for a while. I lost 20 pounds in one, in two weeks. Wow, you do look like you've lost quite a bit in your face and in your shoulders and neck and everything. And I'm doing my best to put it back on because right. my appetite's come back today. I ate barbecue. Oh, well, you know, nice. That, you know, you, you look, look to the sky and say, thank you, Lord, for the little things you just take for granted. And I'm going to tell you that. that uh, Saturday, I decided I was no longer going to be cramped up in that room. I wasn't going to make anybody sick. I wasn't going to get anywhere, any, any close to anybody. But I had been, like, you know, four or five days fever-free, and I needed, I needed that time outside, and I needed that time, me and God, just to talk. So I went and jumped in my command, and I ain't going to lie. I skeeted the tires a few times <laughs> just because uh, I, I could. Uh, and uh, then I went and got my Mustang and put the top down and went and rode around in it for a little while. And, uh, you know, there was a song, the Christian song, and, uh, you know, thank God has a way to get my attention. Never been a perfect Christian. Never been a, been one who, uh, was the poster boy for what a Christian should be. In fact, I fell short so many, many times. But, and the good thing about God I serve is that He loves me unconditionally and He accepts me for who I am. And I spent 30 minutes, or, or the first, I'd say the first half of my drive, apologizing for wanting him to take my life away because life is indeed precious. And the other half, I spent sobbing, thanking him for not answering my prayer. And it was about that time to say, that I still believe my last half came on and it was everything that I had experienced. You know, out on the, out on the cake for 30 days, Hoping the waves don't cover me. And then at the end, you know, it's a, I still believe, and you can't take that away from me. You can't take that away from me. You never will. And uh, I'll make it to the top of this mountain if I have to crawl on my knee, hands and knees. I'll make it. And uh, that's what I did. Uh, and I only did it. You know, I know people don't want to hear you know, Christianity or religion or any of that, you know what? I'm sorry, this is my story. Right. And, and I'm giving credit where credit's due. And, and there, there were many conversations during that time where I felt God reach his arms down and, and, and put them around me and let me know it was going to be okay. Call me crazy, call me what you want, but I know what I felt. 
I really don't know what to say. I mean, you're you're even though you never will admit it, but you're a hero. You're one of the first people to go through this and survive it. And you, I know you don't want to take any credit for that, but to be here and telling us what you're going through and making it real for everybody, I, I'm still working. I'm still writing service and trying to. I have kept cars, you know, serviced for paramedics and firemen and policemen, and and, and we kind of laughingly joked that we're, um, you know, somewhat important to keeping the the world functioning. But you went through it. This is not a joke, and and everybody's still kind of like um, not sure what to believe, not sure to believe if the government's pushing this, the media's pushing this. It's not as big a deal as everybody thinks. Just the flu, you'll get over it. But your story, it's so much more than that, and we really need to be cautious, and, 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 and we don't want to go through what you, I mean, you, we're a soft world. We don't have to deal with tigers and lions and, and searching for food and making fire every morning. You went through holy hell and, and came through the other side and are here to tell us about it. sit back and I would watch these people put stuff on Facebook because when I was awake and I was coherent, when I wasn't delirious, I would look at that and I'd watch what people would write, no matter how ignorant I thought it was, I just didn't say anything. And then when somebody put up a link to my, uh, my commentary of my experience and someone put fake news under it, I, I didn't hold back. I, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't go for the throat, but I did tell him, anytime you want to come to Spark Books after uh, let me sneeze on you or cough on you, you can find out real quick if it's fake news or not. That, that has to be, I mean, talk about being offended and the, you know, that, that's that's just, that was just uncalled for. Well, the thing is, is I don't. They came back and said they were kidding and all, but what, why would you kid about something like that? You know, that ain't kind of be some kind of a sensitive pansy or anything, but uh, you, you just really don't know. I mean, it's like I'm the first from uh, that hospital, the Prisma Health, to get the coronavirus. And I'm like, well, does that come with like some kind of prize package like the New Year's baby or something? Uh, at least get a six-pack of jail or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> and write up in the <laughs> local newspaper or and, something. And then in my response, somebody uh, person that I won the internet for the day for that comment. And I guess that got any kind of prize with it either. You just get the honor of winning the internet for the day. Right. <laughs> I, have, I, I wrote what I wrote, not because I needed attention. Uh, I think I'm in a pretty attention uh, uh, field uh, position right. working drag racing. But uh, you just, you want to help people. Yeah, I mean, you're the so, first, you're the, f of all the people that, that go to PRI and SEMA and Ducks races and the NHRA and, and that, that are in the drag racing community as we know it, which is a really large community. We've got fans watching right now from West, I mean, Australia. It's a, it, in the scheme of things, it's not real large <clears throat> compared to the population of the country, but it is widespread and we communicate and everybody's got a, there's a lot of people that are very involved in this and you're the first one that we all know that got it and survived it and can talk about what you went through. The, the, the thing is, is I've, I've, like I said, I've tried to help people as much as I can. I understood that the, the medical field needs plasma from people who have had the COVID-19 uh, and survived it uh, for the antibodies and other stuff. And I've been on the phone calling my local blood bank or whatever, come test me, whatever you need me to do, I'll... I will be there. I'll open up. You can pull blood all day long. I don't care if it gains me job, but if it helps somebody to not have to uh, not have to go through that. And, and let me tell you something. You laugh at me if you want. But that monster's out there, and it's waiting to pounce on somebody. And I'm telling you, 
New York, it, it's in a bad, bad way. My heart just goes out for those people in New York. The where can they go? You know, it, it's just best to stay in your house and, and, and places like Florida. And it's just, it's absolutely uh, uh, devastating and it breaks my heart. My life will never be the same. I'll never be the same person I was before this. You know, just an hour, hour and a half ago, I was sitting in the yard doing nothing, just sitting there looking at, 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 at the beautiful sunset and beautiful sky and just, you know, I think we got too busy in life and, and, and we needed something to, we didn't really need or want something of this magnitude to slow us down, but it is what it is and it is slowing us down. I don't know when I will be back to a live drag race. I, I don't know because until we have some way to contain this monster, it's going to happen again. And I could never live with myself if I gave somebody this, even though I'm not contagious anymore. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I wear a mask when I'm around my family. You know, I wear gloves still, even though I've been released from uh, DHEC and uh, doctor's care and everything like that. It, it just, I, I don't want to take that chance. And, uh, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to tell you better than uh, it's very much real and I know it because I experienced it. How do you feel, Ryan Wise asked this, how do you feel Trump is handling this whole thing right now? I haven't even watched the news. Yeah, makes sense. I don't know about the news. Yeah. They don't have a clue what's going on out here. Uh, you know, it, it just, you, you, can, uh, you can get political and everything like that, but I'm going to tell you what, I don't care who was in office there. There was nobody that could have been prepared for this. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody could have been prepared for this. You are making decisions on the fly. I, I wouldn't have known how to handle it. Would you? No. no. Okay. But, uh, you know, uh, I've heard some of the things that's been said, and it's unfortunate some of the things that's said, but I think that there's also advisors around people that aren't really wise to advise, you know. But, you know, that's about as political as I'm going to get because there's nothing political about having a 103 degree temperature laying in bed feeling like you're dying. Yeah. This, this COVID-19, we don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, or an Independent, or, or whatever party of the week it is. We don't care. It's trying to kill you. It don't care how old you are, what color you are, nothing, huh? It does not discriminate. And if we go back to racing and we go back to putting crowds together like that, it will rear its ugly head again. Yeah. Uh, and this, this racing world has to go back to work. We all have to go back to work. We have to. But you're not going to be working if you're half dead. Right. Right. I, I think, you know. I put this on. I put this on now, if, if there's one aspect of, 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 of politics. I would say, I put this on big farm, big pharmacy. You could have a cure for this. You should have had a cure for this. You should have been working on this. You should have been proactive instead of, you know, holding back cures for like cancer and all this other stuff so you can make big profits. There, there should have been a cure for this. And I, 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 uh, I, I, I just employ that I, our elected officials put that pressure on them to come up with this cure for this. Yeah, at least at least a fix to get you out of it. How did how did they how do you think they got your fever down and what were they treating you with to help you get out of this? Not cure it, but to get you well. Tylenol. I know they were using Tylenol quite a bit. They had, they had so many IV fluids running through me that they were I just throwing to, everything at you to see what stuck or what. Everything that the kitchen sink, and I think they threw that in there too. Uh, they were doing everything that they could. I mean, it's just like 
you're trying to solve a problem which there's no solution for. And you can see why what you went through, it takes out elderly. Imagine if you were 85 years old and you smoked all your life or, you know, you've got other issues going on and then you get this. I mean, I, I couldn't imagine an elderly person having my mom having to go through this, you know. Uh, and it, it's, you know, you, you think of the things that you, you take for granted, uh, like being able to yawn. I can't yawn. You can't, can't what? I can't yawn. Y A W N. Yeah, yeah, yawn. Why, why is that? Because I feel like I still have a big lump right here in my chest, and it causes me to start coughing, and I can't breathe. Oh my gosh! But yeah, uh, uh, I I was able for the last two days to walk one mile. Wow! Even when I weighed two hundred and nineteen pounds, I was able to run two miles a day. I walk 10,000 steps a day at work sometimes. I couldn't imagine not being able to do that. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's tough. It's tough, man. I, I still, I still, you know, I know you can't have PTSD from any of this, or, you know, I wouldn't dare put myself in the same in, in the same category as those brave soldiers who, who defend their freedoms and those who have gone to war. Well, I still have PTSD from my car wreck, so you can get it from, from traumatic things that go on in your life, and this was a very traumatic thing, so it's not comparing it to a soldier or a cop or anything, but it's still a very traumatic thing that happened in your life. Yeah, yeah it, still, it still bothers me. Uh, I, uh, there's a lot of psychological, even, uh, you know, psychological effects that, that go along with this. Yeah, it, man, I, I feel for you, and, I, you know, talking to you and hearing it and hearing the emotion in your voice is so much more than reading it, even though you write so well. I'm not taking anything away from your writing, but hearing this in person, and that's why I wanted people to tune in tonight, and we've got so many people tuning in that I can't even, and, and the, the amazing thing is that they're just listening. Nobody's commenting. Everybody is checking in is just they want to know what you went through and, and what, what to expect and what's going on with this thing. Because all we hear is what we hear from our friends and the people we're with and the news and, and, and everything is so – and memes on, t, on, on Facebook and all that stuff. And, and, and we're trying to survive this. We're all trying to survive it. People are laid off. The economy's crashing. People are worried if they're going to be able to eat next month, if they're going to be at work still. You know, I'm fortunate that I started this job before – it happened instead of trying to look for a job now when they're laying people off left and right. I mean, it's a scary time for the entire country. I mean, actors, comedians, none of those people can work. There's people that are in service and y'all, there's no racing going on. You can't work. You can't make a living. Fortunately, some of our sponsors are just like, hey, we're going to get through this. We're sticking with you. We appreciate what you're doing. And I'm sure you have sponsors like that, too, that are, are, are there for you. And, and it, But it's a scary time. I mean, I think you're right. We we were so busy going at life and being mad at the stupid shit that everybody's taking a minute and saying, wait a minute, everybody could be out of work. Yeah, and it's, it's every, every aspect of our life will, will be different uh, from this point on, and it has been. I mean, take something. I, I love the NFL. Uh, as you can see, I'm a big time Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Yeah. Team saying Tom Brady, and I'm like, oh, well, okay. Is he yeah. ever going to get to play? Yeah. Yeah, but it just, you know, the things that you, that you hold on to, it just, you, you, uh, you learn to look at life differently. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I just, I just want people to hear what I got to say. That's all I, that, that's all I got to, you know. It's like, my poor daughter, she's a senior in high school this year. She lost her prom, her graduation, everything. Well, they got, they're trying to do the prom and they're trying to do the graduation. Uh, she was on her way to being a sixth year letter in softball. Oh, wow. And, you know, they're not going back to school until May 1st. 
and my granddaughter, she she's pitching for the junior varsity at 12 years old. And uh, you know, today I took, I've been there with the girls to the field. They they go out there and they hit and, and throw the ball and work out and try to stay in condition if if they ever get to play again this season. Yeah. And today the ball field was padlocked. Oh no. And that was a that was an extreme kick in the gut. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but for me who who, who gained gained strength from watching them after hitting the ball. And that's okay. They they made they made uh, adjustments, came home, set up the net and started hitting at home here in yeah. the yard. Uh, it's just those little things that we just you know, it's we, we got we got to find a cure for this. We got to find some kind of thing because a two dose of Zithromax it's not going to cure this. All it's going to do is give you the diarrhea, and that's about it. Wow. Do anything for it. I mean, I'm the kind that every time I get a, a bad sinus infection or something that comes through, you know, you go to the doctor, you get a steroid shot and some steroids and. I've done it to announce races before where I was starting to feel sick and man, it knocks it out and you feel, you know, you feel like crap for a few days and and this is not the same thing. Connection interrupted. Sorry guys. What a great job he's doing. I can't believe he's up this late. He's in, um, on the East coast in East South Carolina and, uh, we'll be back with Bobby Bennett competition plus guys i hope that uh i hope that you're sharing this we're uh, brought to you by Mosier engineering nitrous outlet all out live tbm brakes glass yeah. tech um low star ring opinion katie custom finishes and da vinci performance carburetors and and i, I love my sponsors and I, I just hope that uh i hope and pray that we can get back to normal soon uh, but I don't, I don't think it's going to happen. They just extended the uh, quarantine till April 30th. I think they're going to extend it again um, with, with more testing. We're going to have more positives, more numbers coming out, and more clampdowns. Um, today at work, um, we were told that Harris County was sending representatives out to dealerships and if they had too many people in the waiting rooms they were shutting down the entire dealership so we had to change in the middle of the day and wouldn't couldn't allow people in the waiting area they had to drop their car off or stand outside we put a couple of chairs outside for them because I had some elderly people that needed to sit down and um, but we could, you know, we can't have them even standing around outside, really. We got to tell them you have to drop the car off. It's getting that serious. We have mechanics and, you know, employees and, and parts guys and service advisors that are still trying to survive and pay bills. And they could come shut the whole dealership down. Uh, we have sales staff that is starving because nobody's buying cars right now and they're in the same position we've laid off courtesy drivers and uh, porters and uh, cashiers and we've on a skeleton crew I've got guys staying home and um, so you know it's a it's a big deal I don't know I don't know what the, you know we're telling people we're not getting um, we're not getting, we're not scheduling any appointments. It's first come, first serve. There's no loaner cars being given out. So, I mean, we're really struggling. We're doing everything we can. We're wiping counters down. We're wiping, you know, sanitizing our hands. But I still have to touch keys and steering wheels, and we're making people back up. I mean, I had a guy try to shake my hand today, and I'm like, hey, man, we have to. We're being watched. We don't want to get shut down. So I'm sorry, uh, sorry guys, Bobby, we have an internet connection issue on one end. Um, let me try to get him back on. I, he's messaging me. I, want, I definitely want to finish with him. 
Um, So we're going to try to reload. Uh, I'm going to close out of the app, and I'm going to try to get back into the app. I'm going to close some of this other stuff. Down. So um, Messenger is currently not available. I think I lost Internet on my laptop. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, yeah, The I, I think I lost the, uh, the hotspot. Uh, it says iPhone. Maybe I can get on the iPhone with you. Try it. How's your connection looking right now? Oh, because I'm on. It's back. Okay. Can't connect to this network. All right, guys. Give me one second. Steve, talk to him for a minute. I'm going to go uh, plug that. Everybody staying safe. Um, uh, pretty pretty serious stuff that we're all dealing with right now. It's just weird. I'm pretty sure uh, you know there's a lot of people that are scared and a lot of people that uh, you know are just being really careful, which is not a bad thing. Uh, Wayne, how's everything there in uh, Australia? And can't hear me you sure ah no my mic's working because I can hear it but uh, we're uh, we're hanging in down here all right guys I'm back sorry about that we uh, had a hot spot die I'm gonna, um, it's trying to come back up, but it may take me a minute to get Bobby back on the uh, feed here. We got some more stuff, if he's up to it, that we'd like to talk to him about. Um, so give me just a minute to see if to get this, I plugged the hotspot in this time, it's just gonna take, it's taking a minute to, to fire back up. So, guys, if you uh, are watching this, please share it. This is uh, important information about the coronavirus. Uh, you know, this is this is a big deal. We got to like and share this, please, 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 please. So, I know uh, everybody out there is scared and worried, and, and hearing what Bobby has gone through. I'm going to try to turn Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth on, personal hotspot is on. Let me see if I can get this other. Just trying to get internet so I can get Bobby back on the show. I don't know what's going on with that other hotspot, but my laptop's not finding it now. So I'm going to have to uh, try and connect here to the only Wi-Fi that I can find. I have two phones, two hotspots. Can't connect to this network. Damn it. It's not finding. Hang on one second.
No, hang in there. We're trying to get everything worked out. And uh, hopefully we'll get him back on because I actually have a couple questions. And uh, Ryan's got a good question about, uh, you know, if he's usually, you know, gets the flu easy or whatever. And uh, I think that's a decent question. But it sounds like he doesn't. And uh, if y'all got any questions for him, please post in the comments, and we'll try to pass it on if he, if we can get him back on. But uh, as far as I know, uh, man, I really haven't there heard much about people that have made it through. And I think we got him back here. Okay, about to be back in the room. All right, Steve. All right, we're back with Bobby Bennett, owner and operator of Competition Plus. Um, Competition Plus on YouTube. You got to go watch his Legend series. They're uh, amazing. Uh, Tell, tell us, Bobby, who are the some of some of the legends series about? I know you got uh, you got. We watched the one with Jungle Pam. Who else did you do? Have you done legends interviews with? Uh, John Force, uh, Shirley Morgan. Uh, we did one with Alan Johnson on his brother Blaine Johnson. Uh, did one with Bob Gordon, uh, Bill Garner. Uh, Three of the members of the original Blue Max crew. Uh, only one is alive now since we did the episode. Uh, Bruce Allen, David Rare, uh, just uh, we did one on uh, Daryl Russell. And I'm working on one right now on Mike Dunn. Uh, we've interviewed Kenny Bernstein. I uh, did one on Dave Ellis, uh, one of the premier journalists, uh, you know, pioneering journalists, Steve Reyes, Frank Harley. Uh, gosh, I think we've done like 45 or 48 of them. That's amazing, and some of the best production value out there. And, and I mean, honestly, dude, I, I would love to see your compilation on Netflix as something to binge watch. It's that good. And and we appreciate what you do. And, and the fact that you've been doing this so long, you've been, what, 30 years at least? And, and you yeah, I've actually been doing this for, for, for close to uh, 40 years now. Wow. I published my first magazine when I was 12 years old. Wow. And that, not to give away your age, but that was in the 80s. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, 79 uh, is, uh, is when I started. I was 12 years old, and uh, it was at the old Spumberg driveway, uh, a track where by the time I was 14 years old, I was race director. 14 years old and you're race director? Yeah, <laughs> because I knew the, the, the sport better than anybody else, and I knew more about the driver, so... I was uh, announcing and running the races. And there were times that, uh, you know, some of the older men were like, I'm not going to get thrown out of here by a 13, 14 year old kid. And then I just looked over at the track uh, promoter and said, What does the rule book say? That's what it says, but what did the kid say? He said, I was out. When you're out, go, go home. And that race and that Wow. I mean, you, dude, Bobby, you need to do a legend series and let me interview you. Uh, I don't know that I'm willing to put 60 hours of editing time in on myself. <laughs> well, you have plenty of stories and plenty of relationships with some of the... the and I, I have some stories, and they will, they will most likely go to the grave with me. Oh, no. Uh, Come yeah. on, man. Let those people go to the grave, and then let's tell the stories. Well, is that... The thing is, is we always had that war story show that, that I think I would have won one year if I'd have had it. <laughs> if I'd, if I'd allowed myself to participate. I might not 
That might have been a lot, lot of trouble, but I know where the body's buried. <laughs> oh, man. I just, it, it, you know, having somebody in this involved in this this long and knowing, I mean, hey, you're a national treasure to the drag racing community. <laughs> and I, I, you're, stu- you're too humble. <laughs> You're too humble to admit that, but, I mean, you've been doing it for so long and you put so much effort and love and passion into it that, that it really shows in your work. And, and I'm so glad that you're still here to give us that. I miss two kids growing up covering this sport. Yeah. That's what I gave to this sport. I gave my help. I gave lots of missed opportunities watching children and grandchildren grow up. I... Uh, you, you just really don't, you know, yeah, it's a dream job. It's a, it's a dream gig. And, uh, but there's a lot of important stuff out there that you miss. Yeah. Uh, that's my grandson. I, I, I missed about the first seven years of his life. And I came to him and I sat down with him. I said, Anthony. Papa made a mistake. I spent a lot of time on the road, and I spent a lot of time that I should have been spending with you, and I didn't. And for that, I'm sorry. But you can count on from this day on that I will be part of your life from here on out. And, and me and my grandson, we, we just had a good time together. Uh, we not only get to see each other once every three weeks, or that's every other week, or if I'm home for two weeks straight, then we're spending two weeks straight together. And, you know, the man, that baby girl, she, she, was, she was born, and I was uh, three years in the competition past, and now she's a senior. Well, Getting ready to go off to college. It flies by, doesn't it? It does. I mean, you think that sometimes we forget that there will be other races. Yeah. Yeah, and and, and I think it is all, it's going to make us, like we were talking about before, the the whole country is having to take a look at the way we do things, the way, the things that are important to us. We we spent a lot of time getting mad at the stupid shit, and this is real. Uh, I mean, it's just like, we get, we get, uh, and I think a lot of it was because uh, we were just tired. We were tired. I mean, for instance, I go, go, we go to a dirt race. We'd be there at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And we would leave till like 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. I, I've, so, I've announced from 10 in the morning to 4 in the morning. Straight. Yeah. I mean, you, you have like four or five, five days of that, and it just, it just beats you down so bad. And now they're going to do it two weeks in a row. Uh, whew. Yeah. That's tough. I, I better be stuck. I'm starting to get my stamina up if I, if I hope to survive that. Yeah. I, I hate to say, I, I don't know when we're going to get back to gathering the way this thing is going and, and trying to flatten the curve like they talk about. I mean, I still have elderly men coming in for recalls because they got a letter in the mail. And, and, of course, we're going to take care of them, and we're going to try to take care of our customers. But we're like, man, why are you out of the house? You're 86 years old, and they don't—they're stubborn. They're old working men. They, they, you know, they eat dirt. You know, they pee outside. Nothing's going to get to them. They've killed animals, snakes, whatever. Oh, uh, years old, I still pee outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that I really want to broadcast that, but you know what? I can't say that I'd be much different at 86 years old because, you know what, 86 years old, I've lived a pretty good life. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, at, this, at this point in the time, it's just like, you know, we, I don't know, it, it's just, things change a lot. Things change when, when you go through stuff like that, that just, just absolutely... Uh, it just beat me down. I, 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 you know, it probably would have been better if some thug came up and beat me down 
than to have to experience what I did with that with yeah. the COVID-19 team. And again, I know people are saying, God, I am so sick and tired of hearing about Bobby Bennett. And Bobby Bennett got sick. Big freaking deal, okay? People get sick all the time. And I have this. When you, when you said that the back of your eyeballs were burning, I, I was like, oh, crap, we've got to talk to him. I, I messaged you, are you up for doing a video, an interview? And I, I, ho- I, I hope that you're feeling okay. I don't want to keep you longer. If you need to take a break, you need to go lay down, whatever. You let me know. But people need to realize and know somebody. Most of us don't know somebody yet. We all know somebody's got cancer. We all know somebody that's got diabetes. We all know somebody that's got the flu, had the flu, had pneumonia, whatever, been in a car wreck, gotten you know, injured. But we none of us really know somebody that has it. Tom Hanks has it in Australia, supposedly. But, uh, you know, but and these people are popping up with it. Al, uh, Joe Diffie died from it yesterday. Uh, you know, I, I called my doctor today because I wanted to, him, my general practitioner, uh, family doctor, because I wanted him to give me a clean bill of health. Yeah. So I could I could go on about my life. I could sit in my living room with my family. And uh, they said the soonest they'd want to see me is a month. Wow. A month. You, do you, do you feel like... Kind of like what the lepers did back 2,000 years ago. Nobody wants to be around you. Nobody can be, you know, they don't want to see you. They don't want you going anywhere. You can't go out and you can't go to the grocery store because now you have it. You've got the disease. I had it. Had it. But people don't understand the have and had part of it. You had it. You know, you know stay away. It's Everybody's so scared and nobody knows. you got to feel kind of isolated and, like, shut out. I do, but you know what? They don't have to tell me not to come around. I tell myself not to come okay, around. Yet. Fair enough. Uh, but when, you, know, when do you think you'll feel like, okay, this is past me. I can be around humans again. Next week. Okay. Next, next week, week is just what the, the experts have said? Well, you know, it's been 17 days. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, another week, or, uh, another week will be 24 days. So, at what point are you, uh, you know, non, uh, my doctor, uh, my doctor told me, he said, even though DHEC released me, uh, he would like to see me uh, two days away from any human contact, okay. just to be on the safe side. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Uh, you know, even, uh, I, I just, the other day, I, yesterday, I went through the drive-thru, and I'm, I've got gloves on, and I had my mask on. And we're not talking about some kind of surgical mask. We're talking the uh, car painting mask. Yeah. The, the, the big one with the circle in the middle there. That just the, two, of, the two filters on it? Yeah, it's just, it's a, uh, not the two filters, oh. but it's like a regular yeah. mask. And uh, it was... Uh, Thank, thankful to my buddy Chip Lofton who sent me a box of <laughs> a box of a mask. And, and today, you know, it's just like today. I went out. I decided, you know what? I need to cut some grass. I need to cut grass. I got about five five rows. That's about all the energy level I had. Five five rows, you know, and. and that was okay. That was fine. That was five more rows than I was able to do the day before. Right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't want to say that I have any concept of what you went through at all. 2018, my mom got meningitis. Oh, she man. had, she had uh, the blood disease. The blood. She got an infection in the blood called MRSA. Then she got meningitis, and she almost died twice. Oh, man. That is awful. And, in the, and while she was sick, I was coming back from a, a race in Coffeyville, Kansas, and got in a car wreck and broke my foot in one of the worst dislocation fractures that my doctor had ever seen. They didn't think I was going to walk again. I had four pins sticking out of my foot. 
I had fever blisters. I had spasms. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't bathe myself for a long time. I mean, I had to ha depend on somebody. And after we got out of that, and mom got out of the hospital, and I got my pins taken out, and I started walking on my foot again, my dad died. Oh, man. So, I, that's not even close to what you went through. That's, that's not, you're, you're selling yourself short. That's, that's traumatic anyway, that, that you, you have to watch your mother be sick like that. I was 13 years old and I watched my mom uh, just go right down to 70 pounds and die from cancer. Yeah. And, and that's something that still affects me when I'm 52 years old. And, and to go through what you went through, there with that, and then to have your father die on top of that, mm -hmm. you don't, that, that pain is real. Yeah. That pain is real. It, I mean, and I, yeah, I didn't deal I, with it. It was, but, you know, I just went into survival mode trying to take care of the bills and all that. Now I'm taking care of my mom and working to support her and where, where she, you know, took care of my dad for 30 of his 40 years of, with Parkinson's. And, and, you know, he was an invalid for, for 15 years. And I was, and then we went into survival mode. My, my boys helped tremendously. I had some help from some good friends and a lot of people stepped up when, when all that happened at the same time. But I can't even imagine that's the, that that's not shit to compare to what you went through, dude. Yeah, I, I disagree, dude. <laughs> I'm not trying to get into piss and cough. I'm not trying to compare myself to you, but I just feel for you, bro. I, I just I hurt for you. It's hard that song, you know. Like I said, and I, I've said, said it's an old Christian song. It's by Russ Taff. Uh, it's back then when they were starting to have more contemporary Christian. Yeah. Upbeat song, and the song is called "I Still Believe." And I'm yeah. gonna tell you what: you you get to a point where you're on your knees, and you don't care if you have to crawl all the way up that mountain. Yeah. There's nothing gonna stop you. And uh, just like I, I, I said, you know, I but still believe. And you can't take that away from me. I was in the place where you were emotionally at one point. You know. When you're asking just to go, just let, don't let me wake up in the morning, because you know I, I feel I understand. I, I, I have been there, so I, I know what you were saying when you were in all that pain with a 104 degree fever for four days. I, and if if anybody can kind of relate to you, I think I can. And I and and man, I, I tell you what, you pulled through it. I've pulled through it. And, and it's way better on the other side. You learn so much from it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, believe it or not, I didn't have all this beard and everything. I got to sit there and I got to shave. You know? <laughs> I kind of like it, man. You look like you're, hey, it makes you look a little bit more rustic and, and like you went through something and you and you grinded. No, when I'm 86, I can be rustic. I don't want to be <laughs> Uh, hey, you made me laugh, man. I appreciate it. That's awesome, dude. Man, I, I, I tell you, we, we've got some questions in here. Let me go through. Um, let me see if I can ask if I some people were wanting to know. What, Steve, did you see any questions that you thought were important? Uh, Are you, Ryan wanted to know if he usually gets the flu. If he usually do you usually get the flu? Do you get the flu shot, stuff like that? Do you think that... I never really did. Okay. Uh, never really got the flu shot. Uh, if it's if, if I felt like I had a sore throat or something like that in years prior, I'd just go to the the, the local doctor's care, go in and get my. You know, it almost became a point that uh, I uh, I would tell the doctor, "Yep, give me my antibiotics, send me on my way." You know the deal. And he he would almost he would laugh at me and they. And see, this has been a tough year for me. I mean, uh, the first, like January first, uh, my one of my my pit bulls got in the fight with my older pit bull, and of course I ended up on the end of it. Yeah. That, uh, latched onto my arm and tried to rip my arm off. Oh my gosh! And, and praise God, there was no tendon damage. But I always joked with the doctor that I'd been. I'd had so much antibiotics from here, I don't think I'd get the flu for, you know, a good seven years. 
I had taken that. And unfortunately, it's not the same kind of antibiotics, but, you know, it, it's just been a, been a challenging, challenging year. 2020 sucks a bunch of bag of, you know what? <laughs> you know what? It's still, we still got it good. Yeah. Even if we still got it good. Yeah. And, but I praise God that I'm able to be here today. I praise God. I thank Him. That's awesome. We're glad you're here, man. And, and, and you know, we haven't known each other a whole long time, but you've been on the show before, and, and, and we've hung out at Ducks races and done other things and followed each other's, you know, careers and passions through the Internet and through Facebook, and, uh, and that's where the drag race community, com, you know, com, communicates. And and it's funny that, that everybody's off to, you know, TikTok and Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff, and here the drag race community is still keeping in touch and, and communicating through Facebook, uh, just because of the way the platform's designed. But you know, Sorry. no problem, man. You're 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 excused. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, you were talking about that community. Yeah. I put that article, uh, that commentary that. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, for for like the first two hours that I put that up, I must have gotten thirty five phone calls and about a hundred texts. And, and you know, it's just like you know, you don't think that you know you get a text from the sanctioning body president, you uh, you you get a call from someone like Don the Snake Prudhoe. Wow. Hey like, kid, yeah, what's this like? I hear you got going on. And uh, then, you know, you talk to Dale Poldy, you know, you talk about somebody who, who went through hell, Dale Poldy, when he, uh, the war eagle, uh, when he went through valley fever, and they're just draining leaders and leaders of fluid out of his lungs. Oh, my God. Valley fever. And, I don't even know what valley fever is. It's a, it's a fungal, uh, I would say it's a, like a fungal infection in the lungs. Wow. Uh, uh, you know, that's probably one of the worst kind of pneumonias because I had had about three years ago, I had fungal pneumonia because I decided I would go jogging in a uh, old converted swampland uh, out in Sonoma before I race every day. I would go jog that morning and ended up inhaling spores from that and ended up having uh, uh, fungal pneumonia in the middle of July and August. Wow. You talk about being miserable. Yeah. Wayne Atterbury from Australia is asking how long were you hospitalized for total? Uh, I was hospitalized for four days and they sent me home uh, that because I had been like three, three days without uh, fever and that's why they sent me home. Uh, because they had other, uh, they had a waiting list of patients that needed to get in there that couldn't even breathe, uh, and I was pretty much on the tail end of mine. Uh, had I gone in there four or five days earlier with that, with that, that fever, I might have stayed longer, maybe a week or so. Oh wow! And, and I mean, they they didn't even realize you had it. You were still early enough in this deal. That, that if you walked in, I think, today, that's the first thing they're going to test you for. Uh, you know, they, I had every symptom of the whole thing. I had, you know, it's just like, you know, you, you look at a guy's got an axe in his head, you pretty much know, well, yeah. the guy's got an axe in his head. Well, you know, I had every... Were every, they still in denial at the first hospital, you think? I think they were so overwhelmed, they didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. When the first legitimate case came in, they didn't even, at the time they told me they didn't even have any way to test it, but evidently they did test it, you know. Yeah. Wow. I mean, it's amazing. You're one of the statistics that the world is watching now. Who's surviving it at what age? I mean, it, I'm telling you, you will not see this coming. It took four days for it to manifest itself. From the time I got off that plane, that's what, what weekend was that? Uh, what weekend was that that you were in Bakersfield? The week before Gainesville. Which is what date? Uh, 13, 12. About the 8th or 9th. 
I, I was in I was in Orangeburg, South Carolina, announcer for All Out Live for the Pink Show. It was on planes and people wearing masks and in the airports and stuff. It could have easily contracted it as you did the same weekend. Yeah. Mass symptoms first started manifesting themselves on Friday the 13th. Oh, wow. I was at work that day. Just I, I would have been in Gainesville, Florida, had we not canceled that race. And that, that scares me because I just would have... You would have given it to people. It would have affected a lot of people. I, I'm amazed that nobody in your household got it before you yeah. realized what it was. <laughs> We were very religious about following every detail uh, so that my wife and my girls did not get it. We were, we were wiping our surfaces. We were covering up mouth and nose. We were everything. I wouldn't even let my wife in the room. She would have to leave my meal at the, at the uh, uh, dresser right at the doorway of our bedroom. And she'd have to close the door and get out, and then I would go get my mail. Yeah, I, I don't have a wife. I have a 75-year-old mother that's going to have to, I, I don't want to be around it. If, if I get it, I'm going to have to quarantine myself somewhere out of, in another, in a hotel or something. I mean, it, it brings it to me, brings it to me, what, do you have, you're self-employed, you own Competition Plus, do you, do you have medical insurance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. I don't. If I get this, I don't know if they're going to take care of me or not. Well, you got to have it. I know it's not, not easy, but... I, I don't get it for two more months at, at work. Yeah. I just got to hope and pray I get it, the, the medical insurance, before I get the, the virus. We sending, sending my wife and girls to a hotel or either sending me to a hotel. At $100 a night or 125 a night? I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, but then my wife saw that I couldn't make it. Uh, I couldn't make it by myself. Right. And I mean, she, she, she's a Florence Nightingale with a potty mouth at times. <laughs> she's a, she's a, a Christy, Christy Bennett's an absolute angel to me. Obviously, she took good care of you and, and, and stayed there with you and, and risked getting it herself and, and possibly dying herself. She, I mean, literally put her life at risk trying to take care of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, shout out to Christy. And, and, and your girls. You know, I imagine they were scared to death seeing all this stuff on the news and the statistics and and it happened so quickly. Camera, she can, she can do real thing without me. <laughs> I think that's... that's uh, but Emily, my baby girl, she, uh, she's like, Dad, you gotta hurry up and get well. I miss being able to hug you. Oh, wow. She said, Mom's too phony. You got a little beef on me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. Well, hey, man. We're we're so glad that you're doing well, and so thank you so much for taking the time out and the energy out. I know it's late there to uh, to talk to us and tell us all that you went through. I mean, the, dude, we're praying for you, thinking about you. And, and, you know, it's crazy because I was so busy with you know with no racing going on last week. We we judged um, drag race videos that people submitted. The, the the only thing we I mean we were watching uh, a live feed of street racing on Sunday morning that Limpy was doing with a thousand people watching on a Sunday morning because nobody's seen any racing nobody everybody's fiending everybody wants to get back to the track but people need to not realize that the, they need to do what the what everybody's saying what the government's saying they need to stay home they need the Home Depots are fucking packed. Because people are bored. They're yeah, trying to do shit at home. And they don't need I've to be got, at Home Depot. I've got a couple of videos that I can produce here if I can ever get my... I got the idea last night. Uh, my uh, MacBook said, oh, it needs an update. So it updated to a uh, program that is non-compatible with every one of my programs. Oh, no. I had to my high school buddy who runs a computer shop and said, put my old 
operating system back on there so I can I can start uh, doing like videos on natural pro comp. Uh, you know, a pretty neat deal where they run all food dragsters uh, and funny cars all together on a, a 590 index at Bakersfield. Oh, wow. On Nitro, so it, it's, it, it's a pretty neat deal. And I have another uh, Ron Caps experience we gotta got to kick out there, too. Wow, that's cool, man. We, we can't wait to see more from you. And I, I've got... I, I'm feeding too. I've been working on my station wagon, the Thunder wagon, and I'm like, I ordered ladder bar brackets and stuff today, and got some trade, did some trade for some ladder bars, and was talking to a chassis guy. I'm like, I, I got to make some videos for TikTok. I just, I got to get back to doing this thing, and and producing our content, and and uh, while still working to take care of everything. But uh, you know, we just want to get back to normal so bad, but this is going to take a while. It's going to yeah. take longer than we think. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll be lucky to race this year. I agree with it. I agree with it. Uh, our, uh, our, our landscape of our racing is going to be much different. Yeah. Uh, next year than it is right now. And, and, you know, it's crazy when they started, when they canceled like South by Southwest and they canceled Gainesville and, and they can't, everybody all of a sudden, everything was getting canceled and we're like, okay, why are they freaking out, man? Everybody's just freaking out. Calm down. Quit buying toilet paper. You're still going to, it's not going to be martial law, but we're about to see some scary, scary stuff in New York City. They just did not understand. You know, it's uh, it, it's just overwhelming. I mean, I would not want to be the one, the commander in chief, right now in the middle of this. No, I wouldn't even know how to react, what to do. Uh, Nobody does. Nobody's ever experienced this before. This is the unprecedented. Unprecedented. New York. Uh, I just I just pray for the. For the people of New York, it is so bad up there that people don't even understand just how bad it is. And Florida's getting the same way. In California, and just it's I mean, Houston just got noticed as the most in uptake in positives, but we are testing here now. There's there's drive-through facilities. There's one right by my house at the stadium or the. Katie, where the football players play in the parking lot, and it's got buses all set up. It's the spookiest, creepiest thing in the world. They have school buses set up for privacy, so you, you can't see the cars that are in line to get tested, so that people don't get harassed or, or, or bullied or whatever for because they have it. Because, I mean, they were anybody who looked like they were from the far east like china or japan was getting bullied for bringing this over and they didn't have anything to do with it mm. it's it just people just you know what god has a simple simple rule and it sometimes we make it so unsimple and that's to love one another yeah just have to love one another and treat each other the way we were going to be treated I got up this morning to go to work, and we're working instead of seven um, to seven. We're working eight to five, and we're uh, you know letting people stay home and go home and whatnot. And I got up this morning and got on, the, and I was like, "It's a ghost town out here. This is really spooky." And it, you know, when when there would be plenty of traffic out going to work at eight o'clock in the morning, I said, "You know, this is time I I need to tell the people that are in my life I love them." Yeah. Well, you know. Sunday when I took took the Mustang out for a, for a spin, I was driving around and I was thinking, this reminds me of the 1970s when we had the blue laws and companies actually closed on Sundays. Yeah. And and people spent time at home with their family, or as on Andy Griffith sitting on the front porch after eating Sunday dinner, and, and you know. That's that's what Spartanburg looked like to me on Sunday. Yeah. Man. I, I, yeah, we Katie used to shut down at at dark and then Sundays you couldn't you had to go into Houston to find something to do or go to a grocery store or go to a restaurant or whatever. Yeah. yeah. We just kinda got used to this instantaneous lifestyle 
and traveling and going places and being there in no time and 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 it is a it is a busier time that we live in. We forgot what it was like to have three channels of black and white TV. Right, right, and and you and, and your dad telling you to get up and change the channel. Yeah, and and instead of there being a major league baseball game, there was golf. Yeah. When you're eight years old or nine years old, I can't. You know, I think you could have had your leg taken off by an alligator, and it would have been better. Good golf. And, I, and now I love watching golf. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is. It is, man. Well, dude, hey, I, I I, really appreciate you coming on here. This has been a great interview. I think you've got to, um, you know, I, you know, man, I just hope, I hope that you can start producing content again because I know that that will make you feel better and you'll be more energetic and, 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 I appreciate what you do. I appreciate you going live just from the, the garage, just telling people, hey, man, it's it's out there. Y'all need to be careful and start listening to what the people, what, what the, the um, what do you call it, the powers that be tell you to do, to stay home and, and let, let this thing not spread. I mean, I, I saw a really interesting post where it was showing the dots bouncing against each other and when we're all mingling, how quickly they spread and then when people are stationary and there's certain dots, it spreads slower. And it was just a simple way to show how we can slow this thing down some if we if we listen to what what they say. But then there's still people that have to function, doctors, nurses, and there, there has to be people that take care of those people and make sure their car's able to get them to work so they can go save those lives. And, but but when it comes down to unnecessary repairs for people that are non-essential, that they're just getting done because they're ty- they're they're off. That's where we need to reconsider what we're doing and where we're going and who we're getting exposed to. So, it's real, man, and it didn't become real till talking to you. Well, some people win their lottery. I guess I won COVID-19. <laughs> what a claim to fame. Amen. Well, I tell you what, man, just keep telling your story. Because, you know, there's so many people out there that we know that that are frustrated with not being able to do what they love or want to do or go where they want to go. And, and they need to realize that, that hey, this shit is real and it it could it could take you out and you wouldn't be able to do what you love at all in a heartbeat yeah well dude I don't want to keep you up anymore thank you so much for taking the time to come on we're gonna we're gonna we got this saved we're gonna put it on YouTube we're gonna uh, uh, you know I just hope everybody likes and shares it and 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 uh, appreciates the fact that you were able to take the time and come on and tell what you went through thank you for uh, just you know, I, I I survived it, and uh, you know, and I'm not going to be the only person to ever survive it. There'll be others, and their stories will be uh, more compelling than mine. My story is what my story is. Yeah. If it saves one life or, or makes one person uh, a little more careful at what they do, then that's that's okay. And, if they ever let me get in to get plasma or get whatever that they say that my blood has antibodies that can help others fight it off, well, then I'm, I'm there. I just got to just gotta find a place to do it. Yeah. And what I have to do to help others. Well, man, we appreciate it. And I think the most important thing to do is just keep telling your story right now and, 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 and keep preparing people for what is about to come. I just I urge everybody, you know, if, if you're fighting a battle, uh, listen to the song by Russ Taff. I still believe in listening to words, uh, and you will, you know, you'll, you'll know exactly my mindset uh, and what it is today, because I still believe, and you can't take that away from me. Yeah, well, amen, brother, and we appreciate it, and appreciate your faith, and, you know, just keep fighting the fight, man. We're here thinking about you, praying about you, and uh, 
You're going to get better. You made, it. You. you made it through, man. So. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thanks a lot, bud. Go get some rest. I will. All right, dude. All, All right, right, Steve. Thanks a lot, Bobby. All right. That was Bobby Bennett, Competition Plus, doing a great job, man. What a trooper, dude. Steve, you've been out of work. Yes, this will be the third week that I've been out of work. How are you eating? Uh, canned food. Nothing well, fancy, that's for sure. Well, the Thunder Road Show is going to help you out tonight. so That's well, good. Uh, yeah, dude, that's that's scary. I mean, that's, you know, firsthand that I've heard that somebody's had it. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Are you staying home and trying to? to uh, I, besides going to the grocery store, and uh, I went flying a couple times, and there were only like three or four people out there. Yeah. And uh, pretty much been staying home playing video games. I can't say the same. No. So... I need to be a little more careful yeah, too. It's scary. I'm I'm in the the 50 years age. So. Yeah. That, that's when it starts to ramp up. Yeah. That stuff hits you a Above lot harder. 50. What what is it? 48 to 50. I mean to 60 something 60. is the sec. Like. Yeah. I mean it's uh the last time I had the flu it was ooh, it was pretty rough. I'd hate yeah. to have COVID and go go pneumonia. That would be terrible. Yeah. Because, man, I used to get the flu. You know, I'd be down for a day or two and then pop back up. But this sounds like it's uh, hey, let's, uh, a little rough. We got some – we got to um, take it to a uh, – end on a little bit lighter note. All right. We were asked if uh, we are going to uh, do some of the – you know, I made the post of – Post your video, bo burnout videos. Burnout videos? Yeah, so let's rate the videos. All right. And y'all comment in the post. I'm going to go to uh, the post that I made on the Thunder Roadshow page about posting your burnout videos. And um, the first one is mine. All right, you ready? Okay, yeah, hang on. Uh, are you going to go full screen or are you going to go split? Uh, I was going to go full screen. Wait, it started. Hang on, let me get it. Let me get... Uh, all right, so uh, we're going to open up with my video of the Thunder Wagon somewhere in Mexico. You ready, Steve? Yeah. Hang on. All right. For the people in the back. All right, I'm not going to say a word. Go back to my camera. What do you think, Steve? Give me your honest opinion. Rate it. Man, that's like a nine. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Lots of smoke. Yeah. High RPM. Yeah. Drug it out. Engine didn't bog down. Nothing no. like that. I mean, and that was on VHT on concrete on slicks. So there's that. So let's do some viewer submissions. And uh, we had some comments on this post. Okay, so uh, Logan was the first one to comment. Said he was probably going to get some slack for it. Let me get it. Okay, so first of all, I made, on the post I said, you lose points for being in profile, not landscape. This is exactly what we're talking about, but it looks like it's from a GoPro. But it, I, I think it's a phone propped up or something on the truck. So it's in portfolio mode, not landscape. So you see the black on the side. So that is a, uh, that's a point off. Yeah, point. Okay. It's a Mustang. That should almost be a point off, but, you know, he's aiming at his covered parking. Uh-huh. And, uh. Should have moved it out a little bit more. I, I, I don't know. Let's watch it and see. Let me uh, turn the volume up. So what do you guys think so far? Make your comments or make your uh, opinions known in the comments. Here we go. Okay. He gets a point off for bogging down in the, in the middle of it. Twice. 
at the uh, end, he kind of bogged down. He didn't pull out of the burnout. Yeah. Burnout etiquette is that you pull out. You don't just stop where you're at. Yeah. Right? You got to pull it out and make it look like a burnout, like you're doing it for a reason, yeah. not just to smoke the tires. Points, though, added for smoking up the covered parking like he did. I think it was kind of cool the way the, the, the smoke was shooting in at you. I give it a seven. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with seven. You okay. know, that's funny. I got a burnout video. Do you? Yeah, I need to find it, though. Okay, well, you're late. Yeah. All right, so let's Maybe go. Maybe next week. George Rubastello with the loose screw before he totaled it. So let me go to full screen, turn the volume up, and I'm going to restart it here. So George Rubastello. All right, so he didn't even stop. He rolled through the water, decked it in high gear, and yeah. smoked him like a fuel car. Yeah. Like a pro mod. Yeah. Like a hemi, yeah. a blown alcohol pro mod type car would do. It's not. It was a tube chassis car with a big block Chevy and a blower. A solid 9.5. Yeah, 9.5. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, half a point off for being yellow. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm not a yellow fan. One more time, nine. I'm gonna give him a nine eight, a nine point eight. There's not much you can complain about besides the yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with nine five. Okay. I hate yellow that much. <laughs> All right, so let's go to Tyler Loman submission. Uh, let's see if I can get it to. So I said if it was too long. I don't know if I'm having internet issues again, but that one's not working, Tyler. Um, that might have been a, a, a spoof on us. So Chuck Hoekstra gives this submission here. So GoPro on the side of the car, so it's in landscape. We got a full screen. Small block forward, nice burnout. Yeah, I think it'd be better if it was from further back. Yeah, not on the car. Yeah, it was a cool perspective. Car. Yeah, it's different. Added the added the pass afterwards in 70 index. I don't know. I didn't see who won, but okay, uh, go man, back. it looked like the guy who was racing him. Yeah, bought him at the big end. It was an index race, so um, good submission. I'm gonna give it an eight five. Yeah, eight five. Okay, let me go to full screen on this one. I'm going to turn the volume up, and then I'm going to replay it. Okay. Wow. Corvette yeah. with flames. Yeah. Nitrous car. Big Bubba tires. On motor, that's a solid ten. Yeah, that's 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 a ten. I mean, distorting the the speakers, the so it's so loud, probably nine hundred cubic inches. Man, there wasn't a lot of smoke though. You notice that? Okay, so give it a nine eight. Nine eight. Nine eight. Okay, eight. that was by Dwight Bennett. We're okay. Four more posts. Come on, let's see all of them. Andrew O'Sullivan gives a submission. Wait, what did I do here? Here we go. Andrew O'Sullivan. Let's go volume up. Full screen. All right, you ready for this? Yeah. Maybe. All I have is a blue screen. Looks green here. I mean, green screen, yeah. It's not wanting to play. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Andrew Solis. We'll try to come back. I know he was the one requesting it. All right, so here we go. Check this out. I'm going to... Uh,
that his neighbors love him. Right. And uh, half a point off for the crackhead that's standing in the middle <laughs> of the video. Yeah, right. Um, that's Kenny. Or that's not Kenny. That's so. These are a bunch of Katie boys or old, from Kenneth Schwartz. Okay, for one, you get points deducted for having people hold the car. Yeah, that's that's it's a little not cheesy. Safe. Yeah, but Bob would. Better Bob, Bob, would be, Bob would yeah he, he would, would be, be not a, happy with that yeah uh, he would be it's a Chevelle so I have to give it some love but um, they're in a backyard doing a burnout now nice hairy burnout open header yeah loud lots yeah. of smoke but what's the point yeah if you can't do it on your own hey you doesn't have a line lock on that thing I, I guess not man I wish Tyler I mean Andrew O'Sullivan's would play but give it's him a nine. Nah, I'm gonna give them an eight five. Eight five. Yeah, really? because it's unsafe, and it's it's just a big tire car with a big block doing a burnout in a backyard. I don't know. People in the video in front. I mean, a guy standing there where you can't yeah, see the whole the, thing. The, the, <clears> the, the, the camera angles were right. They weren't far enough back. You had people standing. You had people holding it. Uh, it's gonna be an eight five. All you right. can't give him that much love because there was a lot wrong with it. Okay, so. Timothy Chitwood getting points distract, detracted for being in. It's in portfolio mode. We talk about this. I don't have any sound on this. All right, let's watch it again with full volume the whole time. Yeah, seven was too short. It didn't start on time. It was in portfolio mode. Yeah. He bogged it down. He didn't pull out of it. You always have to pull out. Pull out of your burnouts, yeah. people. Pull out of your burnouts. All right, George Garcia. Let's go full screen. Volume. Look at that, Edinburgh Motorsports Park. That um, that was a badass burnout. You could have heard it first on this. The guy on this video said it. Yeah. That is a ten. That's a ten. Five. Really? Yeah. Wow. On on twenty eight ten fives, which is a small tire, he he spun him over a little bit too much in the water, pulled out of the water, and still got that hair to burn out for that distance with yep. that much smoke. Smoke. And the profiles were good. Right. The, it was in landscape. Right. All the camera, the lighting's good. It wasn't a two hundred thousand dollar car. No. You got to give it a ten. Yeah. Oh, Andrew says it's okay. I wouldn't want to scare the wagon. Oh. oh. He has already been talking. Okay, let's see if Andrew, lame -ass, Andrew's lame-ass lame video won't even play. So It's probably Doug's lame-ass computer that won't play it. No, dude, why is Andrew's video the only one that won't play? Tyler Lowman's is not a video. It's just a screenshot of it so that it will hit play. I don't know. Something at George Rubastello, Logan Perry's, those videos are not play. Or they have a green screen either. So I guess uh, Andrew's video was okay. I saw it. But it was not like Jorge Garcia Jr.'s. It is a Mustang. Yeah. It is a small block, but he's on cheaters or something. It's from the back of the car. Angles are poor, so I, I, Jorge, you had the profile pick. He went out, burned out what a hundred feet. He went yeah. past the sixty foot. That was a hundred foot burnout on slicks. So 
So, I, I think, Jorge, in my opinion, Jorge Garcia wins. Ding, ding, ding. Really? Winner, winner, chicken you, dinner. You want to run mine? Where is it? Send it to me in Messenger. We'll look at Steve's video, and that'll be the end of the show tonight. We appreciate everybody tuning in. We're brought to you by Mosier Engineering, Nitrous Outlet, DaVinci Performance Carburetors, All Out Live. Glass Tag. Glass Tag. Katie Custom Finishes. All right, I'll put it Lone, in the Lone group. Star Ring Opinion. It's in Messenger? Yeah, in the group chat. I just seen it. Oh, there it is. 1959 Impala burnout. There's video of me doing a hairy burnout on my motorcycle at Jared's race. We don't, we don't have to grade this one because I don't do a rollout. Okay. Oh, so you're already making excuses? Yeah. All right. Here is Steve Muncy in a 1959 Impala with a 327. <laughs> Points for a 59 Impala. Absolutely. A black, a black, black 59, 59 Impala. Impala. $2 hardtop. Super rare. We're putting block in your tire, and you're in a ton of water, but you're at a gathering. Uh, we were Deep Eddie Vodka sponsored that oh, God. get together, and it was free. Oh, no shit. Oh, yeah, I was three sheets to the wind. I was, I was, I should have should been driving I should have even been piloting that thing, man. <laughs> tire blocked it was not the same kind yeah of, it was a totally. burnout contest yeah that's all it was was a burnout contest all right dude i'm giving you a solid nine <laughs> i'll take that a solid nine a, a 59 impala but his points a black 59 impala is more points take that dude the smoke coming out of my window right stuff wow that was as many year ago about five years ago. Right? You're having a good time. Yeah. Points for that. Listen to that thing. Oh, Quadrajet was just... Quadrajet 327. Your yeah. Quadrajet. My Quadrajet and intake. Yeah. All right, you can shut it off. No, I think it's good, man. It's good. All right, go back to my camera. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I hope you learned something. Um, this... Uh, coronavirus is serious stuff and I hope every one of you are healthy and and well and um, we appreciate everybody tuning in we appreciate you supporting our sponsors and um, we're going to keep kicking it I'm, I've done some stuff you know, getting the wagon ready to get back on the uh, doing something with it if, even if I had to go out here in, in the shop parking lot and film a launch video I'm going to do it but, uh, I, and I'm going to do it for you. I know people are wanting to see content. Yep. And, uh, try, try not to let it run your life, but, uh, be safe mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah, guys, we appreciate it. Travis Salter's watching, Andrew Sullivan, Mark Henley, Tim Thomas, Eric Moore. We appreciate everybody turning in. Larry Scarborough. Um, Sergio Algimar, Greg Cable. Tony Rodeo, Daryl Patton, Eric Osola, uh, Tyler Ford was watching, J.D. Campbell, Mark McClaskey, Ryan Hubert Weiss Jackson, Ryan Wise. We appreciate y'all tuning in. Guys, uh, scary time for everybody. And uh, oh wait, wait, Andrew Sullivan resent it. 
Let's, uh... All right. You ready, you ready to put this up? Hang on, let me st stop it. Okay. Here we go. Andrew Sullivan sent it to me, Messenger. Thank you, Andrew. Real 5-0 on the plates. He's on a uh, drag radio of some sort. He's on an asphalt road. Mustang from the back. You ready? I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah. The, the rear view is cool there until there's so much smoke you can't see the car. Good sound. Good quality. Uh, probably shout out to his girlfriend for being the one to video that from that profile because she probably got rocks and rubber and shit all thrown all over. I mean, I, I think you can only give it a point off for not having another camera at the angle where you're not covered in smoke. Yeah. yeah, but that angle was good. It would have been great to switch to the other angle as he pulled out of that. He did pull out of the burnout. So, Andrew, a solid nine tied there with Steve and I with my wagon and his 59. I think that's fair enough. You gave me an honest nine. I gave you an honest nine, and we give Andrew an honest nine. Cheers. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back to you with more news more updates something new we may have some more videos for us to grade i enjoy i enjoy doing the grading i know it doesn't mean shit i'm making it up as i go uh, but it's fun it's fun yeah. and it's content a bit of levity. yeah so guys i appreciate it thanks for tuning in like and share this please we appreciate everybody tuning in um tell everybody you know to be safe do your due diligence all those people that used to not wash their hands after pissing they're washing them now. That's yeah. a good thing. Everybody's doing what they should have been doing all this time. Right? I mean, how many times, dude, you've been in a... I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fanatic about washing my hands anyway, but not using soap much less, but just rinsing them off. Yeah. And and now I'm using soap, and I'm catching myself. And, and, and I think that, uh, you know, I, we've all been in airports. We've all been in busy places. When you see guys just go up there, take a leak, and they think, oh, I didn't touch it. Well, you're still, your hands were dirty when you walked in the damn restroom. Yeah. You were touching shit outside. You need to wash your hands anyway more often, not just after you piss. The door that you used to open, the, the door you opened to get into the restaurant. Right. Covered with nasty shit. The door you opened to get into the airport or get out of the air, a car, we all need to be more cautious with that. You know, we've built up immune systems where we can fight a lot of it off, but this is something new. And uh, it's, I don't think it's anybody's fault. I think we were all, as a, as the, as a, as a globe, thinking we were invincible and there was a medication for everything. And there's not. Right. And there may not be for a while. So it is a real pandemic. And, uh, we just need to be grateful for the time we have and uh, tell the ones you know and care about you love them. Uh, e even if it's not, I mean, just, dude, I love you, Steve. You've been a friend of mine for a long time. Love you too, Doug. And uh, love you guys for watching. And, uh, you know, I, I can say that. And don't be afraid to say it. Tell somebody. They may need to hear it. So. All right, we'll be back next Monday at 8. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Check out our YouTube page. We're going to post this up there, too. And uh, uh, we'll be back next Monday. All right, we're out.